Hello, welcome to Greater Heights Devotional. You're welcome. God bless you. Today, we are going to be looking at the topic, Troubles Will Come. Troubles Will Come. Hallelujah. And our scripture reading for today's devotional is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Before we take the test, can we just have a word of prayer? Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Even as we go on in this devotional, we pray for insight. We pray for revelational knowledge. We pray that you open the eyes of our understanding, that you will bless our lives, O oh God, through what we're going to share from this devotional today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Our test is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, and our topic for today's devotional is troubles will come. So let's read our test. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, and everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the day were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her, 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 her firstborn son, and wrapped him in a swaddling, swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there, okay, so that, that is where our text stops to verse 7. Luke chapter 2, verse, from verse 1 to 7. And our memory verse is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. And it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Let's take it again. Our memory verse is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. And it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Praise the Lord. I'm sure some persons, when they hear this, this topic, they might be worried. Okay? But the Bible, the Bible tells us that we will definitely face troubles, we'll face persecutions, we'll face trials. And that is what this lesson is about. Okay, and by this lesson, you are going to see the reason why we cannot run away from persecution. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Because Jesus Christ himself, as our Lord, he also suffered persecution. Okay, but at the end of the day, like when gold is passed through fire, it comes out re refined and better off because all the impurities are taken care of by that fire, by that heat it's being subjected to. Okay, so persecution definitely has a part in place in maturing us, okay, so that, you know, we become the best of what we can be as children of God. So let's take our lesson for today, our outline for today. Trials and, and traditions are a part of our lives as believers. The Old Testament saints and the early church were familiar with trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations were not alien to these um, Old Testament believers. And even the believers of the first church, the first generation church that, that began in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, okay? These people, persecutions and, and trials, were not strange at all to them. They were used to it. God finally uses these trials to fulfill his will. Okay? He doesn't thresh all, all his crops the same way. A heavy sled is never used on black cumin. Rather, it is beaten with a light stick. A threshing wheel is never used on cumin. Instead, it is beaten softly with a light stick. Bread grain is easily crushed, so he, he doesn't keep on pounding it. He threshes it under the wheels of a cat. 
but he doesn't pulverize it. This is taken from Isaiah chapter 28, verse 27 to 28 from the NLT version. Hallelujah. So we are told that a heavy sled is never used on black cumin. So different tools used for different purposes. But at the end of the day, each of those tools, they are used for a particular thing so that at the end of the day, the um, producer or the person that is trying to manufacture that thing, that, that product, okay, will come out with the expected result. So when God allows us to go through, through trials, through persecutions, it is for a purpose. It is not just for the fun of it. God has an intention. He has some intention in mind for allowing us to go through our persecution. So it is good that we, we accept it in good faith. The Bible says that if we must live godly in Christ, then we must be persecuted. Praise the Lord. Now from the text we read, our outline tells us Joseph and Mary had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which is a, a trip of about eight miles. Okay? Today, with cars, it would, be, it would take an hour and a half. So they, they had to journey a distance of an hour and a half, you know, that length of time for them to be able to, you know, to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. This eight-mile journey took them several days. Not forgetting that Mary was nine months pregnant. Okay? Things only got worse when they finally arrived in Bethlehem. So how did things get worse? When they, when they journeyed for several days and they finally arrived at their destination, which was Bethlehem, things turned worse. Things got worse. Things only got, things only got worse when they finally arrived in Bethlehem. All the inns were full. There was no room for them. The Bible says there was no room for them in the inn when they finally arrived. Yeah, it, it took them several days and discomfort, discomfort and, the, and inconveniences. And when they finally got to where they were going to, there, there was still no room for them. Okay? So they didn't find everything funny. It was not a, a pleasant experience. All right? All his plans, that, that means all of Joseph's plans to provide for his new wife and soon to be born child were shattered. All his plans were shattered. Were shattered. They faced several challenges in the process of giving birth to the Savior, but they endured without complaining or becoming bitter. And as a result, God acted on their behalf and everything changed. Okay? So they, they had to bear to carry that load. Now remember that this child that we are talking about, this child is the savior of the world. The Bible says that the angel appeared to Mary and told her that you are going to conceive and you are going to give birth to a child. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from, from sin. And later on, Joseph, the, the husband that she was betrothed to, later on got to know that this child was the child of God, was the son of God, okay? So they knew that this child was the son of God, yet did they not find it easy. When she became heavy and she wanted to give birth to this child, they had challenges in cause of looking for a place where she could deliver the child. So what it tells you is that even if sometimes, even if you are in the will of God, you are going to face challenges, you are facing challenges, you are having persecutions, things are tough for you, does not mean that God is not with you, okay? So whatever comes your way, the Bible tells us that all things work here together for our good. Like our topic for this devotional today says, troubles will always come. It is a constant. Troubles will, will always come. In fact, trouble, trouble comes to everyone. Whether you are a child of God, you are not a child of God. But you see, sometimes the trouble that a child of God can experience might be 
cursed by the devil and will be cursed by the devil. The Bible says that we are not ignorant concerning the devices of the devil. The devil at times might influence, you know, certain things. Just imagine that um, Joseph or Mary, they for forgot about their goal and their intention and they started complaining bitterly. Okay, what do you think could have, could have happened to that child? Maybe she would have gotten some miscarriage, okay? But thank God they accepted it in, in good faith because they saw the end. They saw that the end was glorious and they refused to give up. They refused to give in. They refused to throw, to throw in the tar. They held on to their faith because they knew that pretty soon, whatever challenges that they were encountering, in cause of looking for a place where she could give birth to a child was going to be a thing of the past. So this is the attitude we should have when we, when, we, when we face our challenges. Praise the Lord. The final um, sentence here says, you will always face trouble. You will always face trouble. Because if, if, if Joseph, Mary, and unborn Jesus faced it, then be sure that you are definitely going to face trouble. Okay? Joseph did not faint facing trouble. Joseph did not faint in the midst of trouble. The Bible says that if you are weak in the day of adversity, then it means that your strength is small. If you give up in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And that is why you need to build capacity before the challenges start coming. The Bible says that the wise man built his house upon the rock and the storms and the rain came and the house stood firm. Okay? The wise man built the house because he knew that when you, he gets to stormy weather, whether he, he, he experiences the storms of life or not, the house will stand firm. Okay? He did not need to wait for the storm to come before he, he, he realized that he has to build his house upon the rock. So the foundation was on the rock. Whereas the one that built his house on the sand, when the storms came, it blew everything away and brought everything down. So we need to build capacity before the storms come. Just as we are told, and just as we know, I mean, every adult knows that troubles will always come. So, you don't wait for trouble to come before you get to build capacity. You be develop that resilience, okay, that tenacity before the storm starts coming. So that when it comes, you smile over it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we don't faint facing troubles. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. If you fail in the day of adversity, it means that your strength is small. You know, when Jesus gave the, the parable about the word, he says that the one that fell by the roadside, he said the guy accepted the word and with excitement, he just ran out and became joyful and excited without allowing the, the word to gain some root. But he says the enemy came that, the, okay, the, he, Jesus in that parable, he says there arose persecution and trials for the sake of the word. So for the sake of the word of God you, you have, for the faith that you profess to have, there is going to be a correspondent challenge and difficulty that will want to come to test your resilience, to know whether you believe in what you profess to believe or not. Okay? So for every word, for every faith that you think you have, there is going to be troubles, challenges to test your faith. And if your faith stands the test of time, definitely you are going to overcome and you'll be shifted to a higher level. Okay? So we know that there is no way we can run away from our troubles. We need to face it headlong. And I want you to know that even when you go through the fire, God is with you. When you go through the storms, 
God is with you. He says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I, I know that is a word of encouragement for somebody. I don't know what you, what you are going through right now, but I want you to believe God that you are going to come out of it and you are going to come out of it strong and refined. Hallelujah. So let's take our prayer. The prayer says, God, give me strength to face every trouble that will come my way. Amen. Give me strength to face every trouble that will come my way. It is only God that can help us to go through the troubles of life. It is only God that can help us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that we have had. We thank you, Lord, because you have assured us in your word that you are always there to see us through the storms of life the challenges of life. You have made us to realize again today that it is a constant. If Joseph, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus Christ, they could not escape troubles, even when they were right in the middle of the will of God for their lives, that the Son of God was going to be born into this world, and they could not escape troubles then we too, we must face our troubles. So Lord, we are relying on you to grant us the grace to go through our troubles with the right attitude so that we will come out. Through it all, oh God, we will learn to, to trust in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. And bye.